is present with his counsel. The state's attorneys are present. The jury is seated. Ms. McNeil, Rachel McNeil is on the stand. You may continue. Okay, Rachel, I just have a few more questions for you. Um, after 2007, after your mo mother's death, you lived with Alexis for a period of time? That's correct. Okay, when did you live with her? Um, I'm not sure of the exact date, but it was as soon as the my little sisters were being... Can you tell me, was it in the summer of 2007? I believe it was July of 2007, but I'm not sure of the exact date. Okay, you don't need an exact date. How okay. long did you approximately live with her? Um, until uh, she was finished with medical school. And when would that be, 2008? No. She had three years left, so, okay, so you lived 2007, with her 2008, 2007. Until four years, three or four years? She had three years of schooling left. You lived with her for three years? That's correct. Okay. Great. Now, you stated that it was unusual for your dad to um, write you checks for large amounts of money. That's correct. To give everybody $5,000. the check that your dad wrote for you for the five thousand dollars that you're talking about I believe so I'm and, and the date on that was March 31st of 2007 that's what the date says here okay so you probably don't know when Easter was but but that's the date that he wrote that check out for you the date is yes on this check Another check here that was written out to you. And that was written out to you by your mother. That's your mother's signature on a check written to you, right? That's what this is, yeah. this copy. Yeah, isn't that a check? This is a copy, That's a copy of a check. I'm sorry, it's a copy of a check. Yes. And it's signed by your mother. That's my mother's name. Yeah, your mother's name, name. is McNeil. Yes. Okay. So She's what's the question? Is that her signature? Rachel, what I'm asking, is that a check from your mother written out to you for $1,000? This is a copy of a check that's written in the amount of $1,000. To you. To me, Rachel McNeil. Yes. This, and, and yes. So that, I'm sorry, I don't understand so, the so question. You got a check from your mother on April 1st of 2007, a day after you got the check for $5,000 from your dad, right? I don't remember with this, but this is, but that is if I went and got something for my mother or my father, I mean, okay, don't I don't remember my mother giving me a thousand dollars to spend at all. There was a lot of time that I would go to the store to go shopping or do different things for the, for a family and I would get money to do so but it wouldn't be mine to spend. That's a check written April 26th of 2007 from your dad to you. This is a copy of a check that my dad wrote to me. $4,600? Yes, I mean, this is a question. This is a copy of checks. Okay. Yes. They're written out to you. Yes. Okay. And is that your dad's signature on there? 
or not? I'm, you know what, with any of the signatures or the copies of these and things like that, I'm not 100% sure, but I do see that these are copies. Okay, and there are copies of and checks, of written, checks. Out, written out to you. But it's, but that's, that's my name, yes. Okay, so that, they are, yes. That yeah. check amount is, what, about $1,300? This one? $1,334.50. And um, is that your signature? This my signature? Yeah. That's not my name. No, is that your signature? Is what I'm asking. Objection relevance? What? No, are you talking about the endorsement of the check? Which signature? Here? This is my signature. Okay. Right, the endorsement. But on the front of the check, that's not your signature? Objection relevance. Um, it so is overruled. Just point to the signature you want her to identify. Thank you. The signature right here that that's supposed that written on a check from Dr. Martin J. McNeil and Michelle Michelle M. McNeil. Yes. Is that your signature? That's not my signature. Okay, but that check was written out to you. That's my name. This is a copy of a check. That's not your dad's signature, is it? I do not know. Okay. He has very sloppy writing, so I'm not sure what these scribbles okay, Rachel, are do you on this copy. Um, writing an email to your sister Alexis on June 3rd of 2007. You want to look at this? I don't recall a date of 2007. Okay. I wrote an email. I'm sorry. Is that your email address? Rachel Renee LDS. That was, yes. Okay. And the date is June 3rd of 2007. Is that the question? Yes. 06030. Okay, so that's June 3rd, 2007. That's what this says. And then the subject of that email was called questions. Objection, Your Honor. If she's seeking to refresh the witness's so, memory, she should read it herself. Question. I don't know that that's what she's doing. She hasn't testified that she doesn't remember. Is this an inconsistent statement? You know what? Um, it is. You may proceed. Do you see the subject matter there? The subject, it says on here, questions. Okay, and that was written to your sister, Alexis. To what? Lexi? Yep. So Lexi at rockmail.com, that is her address. Okay, and you said something is very wrong. Is that what you wrote to Lexi? Something is very wrong? May I read the email? Well, I'm to just going to direct you through it. Okay. okay. I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't know. Um, Objection foundation. Overruled. It's June 3rd, 2007 anything. email. Okay. If you could go back to the podium and just read it to her. In that email, you said, Lexi, something is very wrong. I know you shouldn't bring it up with Dad, but something is very wrong with the nanny. Yeah. I think we should hire a private investigator. Yes. Does this ring a bell? Well, that's definitely a thought I've had. Okay. I know Dad well, is suffering definitely. from Mom's death like we all are, but that doesn't Sorry. mean that something weird isn't going on. Please tell me this lady's full name, Gypsy or Jillian or what? What is her last name? Where in Wyoming is her family? I know something isn't right and I want it to be taken care of. Yeah. And then you go on in that email to say mm -hmm. for the first time, why was Jillian at the temple that day? She didn't work in that area or live in that area. Why did dad pretend not to know her name at the temple and why did... Why did she just happen to be outside the temple that day? And so you're posing these questions to Lexi because you, on June 3rd, thought that something... These are all questions I've had. I don't recall specifically writing that email on that day. Okay, but, but from what you've said, that you did write this email on June 3rd of 2007? From what I just showed you? You identified this as your email? That's my email address. And this is your email. And that's my sister's 
email address. I'm really sorry, but I don't know. I'm not an attorney, so I don't know if you can give me a false email. Those are all definitely questions I've okay, well, had. I'll, I'll so I'm not, well, I mean, you can show me it, but. You said that you thought that was false. Will you look at that? No, I didn't say I think it was false. I just, I'm not, if I don't read the whole thing, I'm just unaware if it, okay. this is exactly what I've written. It may, this, if this is from 2007. Okay, well, go ahead. Do you want to look at that just for a minute? And if I read the whole thing, is that all right? Or sure. Okay, to say that then I've... Identified this enough to know that you can get this email? Okay, if I read the whole thing. Those are all questions I've had. Okay. And so, Rachel, um, after reading through that, this is an email that you wrote. It's not some fake email. Well, I don't remember writing that email specifically. I understand. But that seems like something that I would, I, I mean. It, this seems sorry. to be from you. It doesn't seem to be something that was faked or something. That doesn't seem like that to me. I just, I'm sorry, I don't know what the law is, like what you're even... Okay, I'm just asking, you, does this look like this is your email? Because you brought up the question, you didn't know if this was faked or something, so I wanted to clear that up. Well, when I read through the whole thing, when I was allowed to do that, because okay. I don't know what you're handing me, and if I just read one line, then I don't understand. Okay, but after reading the whole document, you think that you wrote that email, is all I'm saying? Yes. Okay, thank okay. you. No, I'm, I'm sorry if that was... That's all right. Okay, and you've been diagnosed with a mental illness. Have I been diagnosed in my life with a mental illness? I have. Okay. And part of your mental illness is that you have
have delusions and psychosis, right? No. Oh, wait. Part of my diagnosis? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't even, I really don't understand your question right now. You have had delusions and psychosis as no. in your life. Okay. It's just a question. Ever had delusions and psychosis? No. You've never reported to your doctor that you were having delusions and psychosis? Sustained us to foundation. Um, you you see a a doctor called doctor named Dr. Jeffrey Hansen. No. You don't Jeffrey Hansen? I don't know who that is. I don't recall. Okay, do you recall going I to see the emergency department in August? of 2012? I do recall. Okay, at Intermountain Medical Center? I'm not sure exactly. Okay, well, tell me where you went. If you recall going to the emergency department, where did you go in August of 2012? My brother-in-law could tell you, but I was just driving with him. and He drove and, and he I walked in. So He took you to the emergency department? That's correct. Okay, and he took you there because you were having delusions and psychosis, right? No. You may I approach, Your Honor? You may. Now, who wrote this? This is a medical report. Does that look like that is related to you? There's a name on there. Is that your name listed at the bottom? That is my name. Okay, Rachel McNeil. And this is part of your your medical records. Uh, I have no idea. Well, uh, overruled. She may be impeached uh, using the document. You, c If you can just come back to the podium, you may uh, impeach her and you have to accept what our answers are, so. Okay. My therapist can. Okay, so. Um, Explain. On August 31st, 2012, you went to the emergency department, like you said. On what date? I'm sorry, I don't remember specifically August 31st, the date. August 2012. I do not remember specifically the date. Okay, but you remember August of 2012, going to the emergency department? I know it was in 2012. And do you remember walking in there? Yes. Okay, and you talked to a doctor there? I did that once, and I do not recall his name. But okay. if you, and you if reported, you have... or he reported, that you were having delusions and psychosis, right? If that's what he wrote, okay. yes, I guess, if that's what that person wrote. And you were reported as being very anxious? Yes. And you were very animated and had flight of ideas? I don't underst understand the question. Do you recall telling or discussing with the doctor your mental state? I told him what had happened to me. Okay. And do you remember telling him or the doctor telling you that you had altered reality testing? You can just say yes or no. No. Again, do you remember reporting twice that uh, you had altered reality testing on that day? Again, the answer is no. And you've been diagnosed bipolar? Have I in my lifetime been diagnosed as bipolar? Yes. yes. I have nothing further, Your Honor. You may redirect. It's not. Just briefly, Judge. 
clarify a few things, Rachel. Okay. When you testified earlier today about your father reenacting, finding your mom in the tub. Yes. Who was present there? Who was present with you when that reenactment took place? Alexis. Alexis and your father and you were all there, correct? That's correct. When you returned home on April 11th, 2007, that yes. afternoon when you found out your mom had passed, who do you recall being present at the home? On April 11th, 2007, who was present at the home? Sure, when you returned home. Um, Alexis was at, my, was at the home. There were some neighbors, my father, later the rest of the children that, that day. My. Are you aware of anyone else also noticing that the stuffed animals decorative towels and other That's things have been removed um, the question is are you aware it's correct it's premature am i old? do you know straight state it that way do you know whether or not other people are aware of the stuffed animals and the decorative towels and things being removed from the master bedroom upon the day of your mom's death yes When the defendant gave you the $5,000 check, it appears March 31st is when that may have occurred. Who else was present when that happened? I believe that, I can't remember if Damien was there or not. I know he received a check. I know all the adult children did besides Vanessa. Um, but so my mother was there. My father was there, Alexis, and myself. I can't remember specifically if Damien was there or not, though, at this point. I'm sorry. Okay. When Gypsy moved into the home as the nanny, yes. were other people present that day and then in the weeks following? Yes. Like, who else was there? Um, everybody in the family. And then... Um, they went around together. Your little sisters as well? My little sisters, my brother Brina. Damien. L. L. yes. Giselle. Giselle. Damien, Eileen, different people. I mean, they've been present in the home. Alexis, myself. My father. Nothing further, Your Honor? Anything else? Thank you, Ms. McNeil. You may step down. Is she released from her subpoena? Oh, do you, I'm sorry. I've released you too early. Have a seat here. The jury may have questions. Just pass them to the end of the row. Do you intend to keep her under trial subpoena? Any objection to her being released?
Neil, let me ask you just a few more questions from the jury. Uh, the first is, did Mr. McNeil describe turning your mother's body over during the demonstration? Do you remember that? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yep. Yeah. Did Mr. McNeil describe to you turning your mother's body over when he was demonstrating that for you in the tub? I don't remember. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second question is, did Mr. McNeil express any concerns to you regarding what, the, what he thought the autopsy might find? I don't, I don't remember. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Any follow-up questions? No. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, the parties have stipulated that the clothing that you've seen, that uh, both the bra and the LDS garment top were cut. You may step down. Thank you very much. Thank you. a witness that we can deal with in 20 minutes? We do, Your Honor. Good. Let's get that person called. State calls Jackie College. Call Jackie College. Ms. College, would you just come through here to the clerk's desk? Please raise your right hand and be sworn. Thank you. If you'll be seated here, please. Council, would you collect these uh, materials? Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for waiting. Um, will you state your name and spell your and spell it for the record, please? Jacqueline College, J A C Q U E L I N E C O L L E D G E. Okay. Um, what city do you live in? I live in American Fork. Okay. Did you know the McNeil family? I sure did. How did you know them? A long time, uh, 20 plus years. I had a ballet school, actually, a satellite school of my business that at that time was in American Fork. And Michelle brought her children to train with me at the Petite Neat Academy in ballet. So I knew them more as clients and in a business situation at first. Um, and did that relationship evolve over time? Yes, it did. How did it? Um, at first, um, just very polite, and uh, eventually I could see the talents that Michelle had, especially to do with the fine arts. And so we started inviting her to help us and um, volunteer in different organizations for my nonprofit organization. What were some of those talents? Uh, sewing, creating beautiful things, dinner. Um, she was a wonderful cook. Uh, she was very good with people, very, uh, I, I would say, a very eloquent spokesperson for the arts generally in the community. Um, so we used her in that capacity many times. And what, 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 excuse me, what ballet organization was this? This is Utah Regional Ballet. Did you bring her into that organization? Yes, we did. At first she was our guild president, um, and she served on guild boards with many people. And then we brought her in as a board member for the board of directors for Utah Regional Ballet. 
Okay, I wanted to ask back up and ask you some questions about, uh, you said she brought her kids uh, uh -huh. into your ballet. Which children were they? Well, actually, I've trained all of them at one time or another, but these children, it was Vanessa and Alexis okay. and Damien at the time that came to take ballet with me, and the older children participated in productions of the Nutcrackers whenever I needed extra dancers or performers. I eventually involved the complete family. Okay. So it's, uh, uh, when we talk about, uh, when you say you eventually trained every all of their children, uh -huh. are you talking about all eight? Um, let's see. Or are you talking about the yes, first biological children? Yes, I did children? even the chronological children in the beginning, and then when she adopted her children, they all trained with me as well. Okay, when you said chronological. Did you mean biological? Biological, yes. sorry, okay. yes. Um, <clears throat> um, as this... Um, as you brought her into the uh, the ballet organization, how did your relationship develop? Um, it was a good one. She was um, outspoken in our board meetings. She had wonderful ideas. She wasn't afraid in, at, at all to stand for something that she believed was a good direction for the company to go. Um, she wasn't easily persuaded um, by other people. So I felt like she was genuinely there and contributing. Okay. Did you become friends? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, how close would you describe that friendship? Very close. Um, she, she was a wonderful friend. She was often giving me advice. Um, I could call her about things, but she wasn't the type of friend that I saw on a daily basis. I would see her if she was bringing the children to ballet, and I happened to have my schedule. We would see each other, but um, she was a type of friend that I knew was there if I needed her, and she came through very, very well. Uh, over the course of your 20-year friendship with her, or at least relationship, um, did you ever see signs of severe depression or anything like that? In Michelle? No. Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Um, I can speak to that, Your Honor, if you'd like us to approach. Would or? you approach, please?
the objection is sustained for the reasons stated at the bench conference. Go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> did you become aware of Michelle's death? Yes. Um, did you attend her funeral? Yes, I did. Um, did uh, did uh, Mr. McNeil speak at the funeral? Yes, he did. Will you describe his address? I Objection, it. Your Honor. Speculation. I'm overruled. She heard it. Go ahead. And, and objection on foundation in, in relation to the, the form of the question. He's asking her to describe it rather than... Sustained. Let's focus on specific statements. Go ahead. Okay. Will you... Um, <clears throat> Uh, what did Martin talk about during his uh, funeral address? I felt like he talked, well, I know he talked more about himself than he did Michelle. What um, did he say specifically about Michelle, to your memory? Um, I can't remember a lot, um, but I, I do remember him talking about how he would survive and the children would survive this terrible thing that had happened to them. What did he say about himself? Um... I, I can't recall anything specifically other than it just had a feeling of it was about him and his grief. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did you interact with, uh, uh, with Martin and a young woman uh, soon after the funeral? Yes. Would you describe that event? Um, my doorbell rang and Martin, Martin McNeil and Jillian Willis, he introduced me and Sabrina, L, and Ada were at my front door. And, and this is at your This is at home? my residence. Uh -huh. And is that, was that residence at the time also in American Fork? Yes, it was. Uh, and when in relation to Michelle's funeral was this? It was Im immediately after. I, I felt that it was the very first Monday after, but in speaking with my husband, he reminded me that we had carpets cleaned and the house was at a disarray when they came. And um, we talked together about it because he was there at the same time and decided it was the following Monday. So um, the it, week following. You thought it was the, the, the Monday after the funeral, uh, but there's, it possibly was the week, yes, a week later. But it was very close to the funeral. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did you have a conversation with Martin at that time? I did. Um, what did you talk about? First of all, he introduced me, Jillian, and said that she was going to be the new nanny for the children. Um, the first thing I said to him is how sorry I was because I really didn't feel like I'd had an opportunity to speak to him. And um, I said, I just can't believe that Michelle is gone and that she had health issues. And he, he told me that she had had health problems her whole life and refused to take medication. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did you offer any help to the McNeil family? Yes, I did. Their, their three youngest children were still um, training at my school. Actually, yes, Ada was still there, too, at that time. Can and I stop and clarify real quick? At the ballet school. I, is this during the same conversation, or is yes. this at a different time? Okay, yes. go ahead. And, and at a different time. I just told him that I'd be willing to help in any way, um, getting the children to ballet because they were very involved mm -hmm. and any other way that I could help. I was just trying to be of service of some. On the offer to get his children to ballet, was that, uh, did he take you up on that offer? Not right there at that time. He said that uh, he would be in contact with me and then later I got a phone call asking if I would help. Okay. Did he explain why he wanted your help? Yes. He told me that he'd hired a nanny and that she was a nursing student, and she would be un available to pick up the kids from school and get them to ballet. And because I had already offered, and my daughter as well, he said that it would be great if we could pick them up and get them there because the nanny wasn't able to do it. Okay. Um, do you recall Mother's Day of 2007? Yes, I do. Did you attend a church service that day? I did. My Objection, Your Honor. Relevancy. Approach, if you would.
So, Mrs. College, you were saying that you attended uh, uh, a, a church service on Mother's Day. Yes, my grandson was christened that day and received a blessing in my daughter's ward, which happened to be the same ward as the McNeils. Okay. Um, did Martin McNeil address the congregation, congregation that day? Yes, he did. And uh, this is on Mother's Day, correct? Yes. Uh, did he speak about his recently deceased wife? Yes. And what, and what did he say? Um, he spoke about how sad he was about that um, to begin his talk. And then the, most of the talk was about single mothers and how important it was for single mothers to be recognized on Mother's Day because of all the work that they do, even though they may not be married. Did you ever come to know uh, Gypsy Willis? Um, I met her. She was in attendance that day at, at the meeting. Um, I, that's as much as I know about her is when you know he whether, introduced me. Do you know whether she had children? I don't. I believe I heard that she has had uh, a child, um, and I couldn't tell you who, Your Honor, who told sustained. me. Sustained as to hearsay. Um, I have no other questions. Do you have cross for this witness? You testified that um, uh, at some point after the funeral, Martin and Gypsy and, and Elle and Sabrina, uh, I believe, came to your house. And Ada. Uh -huh. and, and Ada as well. And uh, at that visit, uh, Gypsy uh, was was introduced to you as the nanny? Yes, she was. And, and so when they came to your house, uh, it was your understanding that she had already been hired as, as the nanny, correct? Yes. Fair to say that that could have been three weeks after the funeral? It seemed so close to the funeral. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare say that because it felt like it just, everything was happening so quickly. Um, the death, the funeral, the, so to me, it seemed sooner than three weeks. Could have been three weeks though. I'm not sure. That's not what I, I think. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. That's all the questions I have. Thanks. No regrets. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Uh, any questions for this witness? Doesn't look like it. Uh, is she released from her trial subpoena? Yes. You're released from your subpoena. You may step down. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be in recess for today. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I'd like you to come uh, to court tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, if you would, rather than 8.30. I uh, have some issues to deal with in the morning. We'll, I'm hopeful that we'll get started right at 9 o'clock. Uh, remember my admonition to you. Don't form or express any opinion about the case. Don't have any discussions amongst yourselves or with anyone else about any subject matter of the trial. Do no research on your own using your computer or something else. And finally, uh, avoid television, Internet, radio news coverage of the trial. Have a pleasant evening.